Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I'm Monica, the Kismet Chemist. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Welcome to the family. I am honored to have you. If you are returning, welcome back. I have missed you. All right, you guys. So today we are going to be doing messages from your person's higher self. This is um, one of the polled readings that I asked about that was, um, the, I want to say it was the highest. I'm pretty sure this was higher than the guidance one, but it definitely had the most reactions in the very beginning. And so I wanted to get this to you guys before I start doing guidance readings and whatnot, because this really intrigues me. I haven't done a from a, another person's higher self. And in my opinion, in my beliefs, when it comes to relationship readings, interacting with the person's higher self rather than reading their current energy is acceptable because you can ask permission from their higher self rather than the invasiveness of um, reading someone's energy without their permission. So when you guys come here, um, you come here with an open energy. And that to me is why I'm able to do these readings. So I'm very, very careful about relationship readings because the truth is for me, if I were to do a relationship reading, I would be doing it on you. What guidance you need, your energy coming at this relationship rather than someone else's because they're not giving me permission to read their energy, but you by interacting with these readings um, are acknowledging that your energy is within the collective. I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions about it and why, um, why I don't normally do relationship readings, um, it, is, it is a personal choice based off of every, every different reader. We all choose how we wanna go about this. But I wanted to kind of explain a little bit to you guys so that you understand how we're going to move forward because Spirit has been calling me to do relationship readings and love readings, but to do them in a way where I honor my own belief systems about energy and energy work. For me, with energy work, you always ask permission, always. So I can interact with the higher self or I can um, talk about your own energy moving forward in a connection or to welcome in connections if you're single. Those are kind of the realms that feel the best to me or healing realms, which if you are not new to my channel, you know we like to do that. So I have now talked your ear off um, without the intention of having a long intro. So we have four piles. Each one has a different crystal as well as as a different card. So let's go over those. Pile one, you have this beautiful card. We are working with the Journey of Love cards here, by the way. Um, it's in Elena Fairchild and Rizuli and Richard Cohn deck. And I, I love Elena Fairchild stuff. She's amazing, amazing, <laughs> like seriously. Uh, so we have the breaking and with this, you also have this lovely, beautiful, I'm going to try and kind of make it so you can actually kind of see it, but it is quite clear. It's a very, very light rose quartz um, tower. There you go. <laughs> For pile two, we have beauty. I love her. I love her hair. I'm a sucker for a natural redhead. Like, I, I just think it's so beautiful because you have that Celtic vibe to it. It's just, oh. And then we have this um, Sodalite Heart Palm Stone. And I love this one because it's designed to help with you really working on the energy of speaking truth. For pile number three, we have this absolutely brilliant, beautiful woman of light card. 
Yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more time with that if you want to connect. I apologize for the just absolute terrible nature of my nails. I <laughs> I paint nails like a five-year-old. Um, it gets all over the place and then they crack and break. Um, but post-op, I still can't get acrylics yet. So, and then we have this beautiful, beautiful, my absolute favorite tower, this pink opal tower. I, this was suggested to me by Zar from Lunar Refresh. Um, pink opal was, and I actually wear a pink opal bracelet regularly and got this tower. And she was not wrong when she said that crystal was calling for me. Um, it has radically transformed how I create in my life in such a short amount of time. And I am definitely here for it because the creative juices and energies are flowing so beautifully. And I just feel so much better about it. And then we have this absolutely stunning pile number four with heart fire. And my first ever heart crystal, and it's a heart rose quartz crystal here. All right. Okay, my loves. So that is what we have. Um, I will put the timestamps in the description box as well as in the comment section below. That way you guys can go to whichever one calls to you. And if you need just a little bit more time with them, I will timestamp when we start going over the cards as well so that you can go back and kind of review them if need be. So without further ado, I will see you guys at your piles. Hello, pile one. If you chose the rose quartz tower as well as the card, the breaking right here. This is the message from the person on your mind's higher self. So I'm going to actually read the excerpt from the, the breaking first, and then we'll move from there. So it says, you are breaking apart. You might not understand it at all. There is not so much to be understood, but the simplicity doesn't mean it is easy to endure. You may worry that you are going too far, that you may not recover or ever come back together again. But what can you do? Can you hold back from the divine love that calls you, that lures you to becoming all that you are, to remembering your divine nature? Well, you could try, but for what purpose? Temporary rest before the storm at best. So let the rest, if you need it, then dive into the storm. Oh, so take the rest if you need it. I apologize, guys. Then dive into the storm. Let yourself be brokenhearted by the divine so that you can become your truth, become all that you are meant to be. It is better to have the heart broken so that it grows than to be brokenhearted by thinking that you must protect yourself from love. This oracle brings compassionate guidance that no matter what sadness or anger, despair or frustration you may feel, you are being pulled apart not by dark forces, but by the loving embrace of the divine as it strips you of that which would keep you from your divine realization. Let go and break. It is going to be the making of you. Finally, there is a poem at the end and it says love. Love is a special closeness that sings from the heart, that warms my days and nights, that feels good, that makes me smile, that makes me glad to be alive. Pile one. As hard as this may seem, as hard as this may feel in this moment right here and right now, there is a breaking down, a breaking between you and your person. I don't feel as though this is something that you aren't aware of. And it doesn't feel like a message you were not necessarily suspecting. Whether this is because of harsh words spoken, mistakes made by you or your person. Sometimes the things that we believe are the greatest, the most beautiful, the most brilliant, 
in our lives, the connections, the relationships that we feel have the greatest level of love really don't. And they can never, ever compare to the love from spirit for you. I am sorry to be here and be telling you these things because I wanted this, I wanted this to be a hopeful message. And it is my hope that in bringing forth this message and these energies that you'll find that hope and that love within yourself again. Because it does not feel as though this is a complete loss if you don't want it. There's two separate energies. Some of you have been on that cusp, on that precipice of it just being done. And it's hard when you want to just be done to keep going. It's hard not to keep going and it's hard to keep going. But if you are that, at that point that I am just ready to be done, if if the pains and the anguishes and the ways in which you've been treated have been so abhorrent that the best thing that you can do is walk away. Know that there is love for you still. Know that you can let go and you can give forgiveness to yourself and to the other one, but that your life can restart. Know that it is possible for love because you are worthy of it. Let's keep going. <laughs> Turn on your heart light. Reflect on a time when you have experienced love. And it's card number 36. Now, this is talking about that energy. And I said there were two camps. The other camp is the one that knows that things haven't been the best. But even if they haven't been the best, it hasn't been easy. And it's, it's still something that you're willing to work through, that you're willing to push through. There's nothing that has been so terrible that it can't be repaired. That's the second camp. It's up to you, but a breakdown, a breaking, a breakage, that's what's happening now, and it's okay. It's meant to happen. All right, my loves, I apologize for Willow and her sassafrasness. Um, to me, what she wanted with her wanting to go outside and she just wanted to sit by the door, this is her wanting to protect. There's an energy here that your higher, the higher self of your person, whoever it is that you're thinking about, wants to protect you from pain, from, from the continued pain that is going on. There is this calling to reflect on a time when you experience love and to think about the ways in which your recent experiences compare to that. And in normal circumstances, I wouldn't tell you to do any kind of compare and contrast, but sometimes you need to. When I was going through my divorce from my first husband, I thought my life would never repair itself. The, the level of breakage that comes when you lose a relationship and something that you've been in for years. For me, I was married for eight years. We had two children together, raising three children, one of which was my daughter from a prior relationship. And we had done everything together. We grew up together. We got married when we were teenagers. We, we did everything. We thought that we grew up together, but the truth is, is that we stayed stagnantly youthful together, naive and incapable of growth. We hurt each other, we cheated on each other, we were awful for each other. But it doesn't mean that there weren't moments in which there was love in existence, because there were. But your whole life changes. And this doesn't have to be a, a divorce, but if you're going through a breaking of your relationship because you have changed, because you have grown, because you have gone through a spiritual awakening and become a different person, sometimes we go through those breaking points in our relationship. Sometimes we have to endure a change of massive proportions. 
whether you're in the the realm of this can't be repaired or you're in that zone of there is still love here, but there is a breakdown that has to happen for the love to shine forth again. You know in your heart what is right and your person's higher self wants you to know that there will always be love there. No matter whether you need to walk away or not, there will always be love. And new love can always sprout from what feels like the desolate fields of the love that came before. So let's see what other messages we have. We have playfulness. Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together and remember, love is the greatest healer. Absolutely. And then we have past life relationship. You have known each other before. And this this tells me that in the in in the past, whether it's a past version of you and your person, that and that feels more like the past life relationship. It's like there were past versions of yourself. And as you shed those, sometimes the shedding is really heavy and you forget that you can laugh together, that you can play together, that you can experience the joyfulness of life. And for those of you that are still seeking to make this work, to make this relationship work, remembering that every past version of yourself and every past version of your person, they have been important, intricate, integral parts of this journey that you two are spending together. Remember to see those moments of love and joy and laughter and play between you and your person. Think back to them and hold on to that and say, okay, we are not necessarily the same people we were back then, but what can we do to laugh together again? My husband and I now, one of the things that we do is we make it a point to be silly together. We have vastly changed in who we are. The core essence of each other is still the same. We are still each other's soulmates. We are still each other's person. But I am not the person he married. My persona, my personality, my awareness, my self-awareness, I am not the person he married. Those are areas of my life that have grown in abundance since we have come together. I have grown as a person together with my person. Your person's higher self is asking you to remember how to do that because in the past, that's what you could do. And you may be going through a cycle of breakage where you two were past life lovers and the lessons of that past life have now been learned and integrated. integrated. And so the breaking that is occurring is the breaking down of those old cycles, those old patterns, so that you two can come together and have that healing in love. Now, let's see the other side of it. This is for the people who know that they can still make this work. For the people who, who are in that other category, who just know it's time to walk away. Let's see what we have. A message for you. I'm thinking of you this very moment. Your love fills me with light. I love you. And passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Okay. So there, this one is letting you know there is a, a vast difference between passion and love. Passion gets us all hot and heated. And we, we can feel passion in rage, we can feel passion in anger, we can feel passion in love, we can feel passion in creativity. When I sit here and I do these readings, I, I am very passionate. When I talk about things that I believe in, when I talk about things like getting on my soapbox, I'm very passionate. But passion when it comes to connections is significantly different than love. And this, this category or this group within this pile that know that this is not the right thing the the message from your person's higher self is that their higher self loves you whether or not their their 
person, your person in the physical world knows that they can show you that, ex express that, and give that to you on a regular basis. Yes, they may be able to give you passion, give you that soaring feeling, that butterflies and and roses feeling, yes, they can give you that, but that is not the core of love. Love is enduring. Love is unconditional. It's unending and it is loyal and faithful. And yes, as hard as this is to let go, to move forward, to move on, as hard as it is, you deserve both passion and love. You deserve what the other group is doing and feeling. You deserve what the other half of this pile feels. That that playfulness, that joy, that experience of love that heals, love that breaks things down and goes through the cycles and goes through the breakage, but can see the love, feel the love, experience the love and grow in that state because that's how passion is fueled. But when you have a, a chasm between passion and love and one is not being reflected in the other, unfortunately, you have to ask yourself those really hard questions. And your person may not be capable of asking you the hard questions, but their higher self is here saying, what do you see reflected back to you? Is it passion? Or is it love? Or do you have them both? That playful, loving, let us break ourselves down and grow together energy. Where is the love? I have to be honest. The song that came through when I first tapped into your energy was Bloody Mary by Lady Gaga. And I kept hearing the part that goes, um, I won't, um, I won't cry for you. I won't crucify the things that you do, but I won't cry for you. And it was, it was this energy of your higher, your person's higher self is saying, it's okay for you to be strong through this. Like, if you don't want, if you don't feel like you have it in you to be angry because anger is a much easier emotion when you break down, when you break up. It really is. It's a much easier emotion. But if you can, if you don't feel like you should be crying for this person because of what they've done. And I have to be honest, I am actually getting a kind of infidelity vibe from some of this energy. And it's not because of you and your worthiness of love or your lovability. If that's the case, it's literally this person is lost, lost in the dark and they can't find their light. And your best bet is to forgive. You don't have to cry, but you don't have to horribly punish them. You know, my ex-husband cheated on me with his new wife. But I also cheated on him. I, re I, I cheated in response to infidelity and that's never a good thing to do. I should have walked away years prior to when I did, and I didn't. Does that mean that there wasn't love between us? No, there was. It wasn't a healthy love. I think the, the biggest message here is understanding actions and words and identifying emotionality that speaks to the truth versus emotionality that speaks to occluding the truth. It's which emotions make you feel that kind of sinking, honest feeling? Because sometimes the truth is a sinking feeling that we love each other, but what is the truth in the situation? I feel like the energy that I'm getting from your person's higher self just simply wants you to look at the situation in reality and make the decision that's right for you, first and foremost. 
And guys, I did not expect this energy at all. But I have to tell you, when I was preparing for this pile in particular, when I was shuffling this and I picked out the, the point, the tower's energy was about you loving yourself unconditionally first and foremost and how needed that is. But the breaking card, it flew out, sat there right there, and it was ready. It was ready. So that tells me that you have been ready for this message for a while. Maybe you have gone to other readers and it hasn't resonated completely. Maybe it has. I'm actually, <laughs> there was a reading that Esotero did um, similar to this one. And she was just getting pissed. She was getting pissed about the situation at hand. And it resonated so, so strongly with me and my ex-husband. And I was listening to her talk and listening to her just get just so indignant for me. Maybe you've experienced readings like that. Not a single one of us readers has the capability. And, and I certainly, certainly hope that not a single reader would have the audacity to tell you what you should do in this situation because it is your life and your responsibility and your love and your relationship. And it is up to you and what your heart and your guides tell you. Even the higher self of your person is saying it's your choice. So let's see on the side of the people that are going through this breaking um, of their old selves and learning how to come back together in a playful way and through love. What what guidance do they need? Can we get we'll go three cards? We have seek, which is the hermit energy. Love that we have two birds here. Yeah, <laughs> the heart chakra. Okay, and the base chakra. So this is about um going within to to make this work to come back together to come back to this place and to let these old cycles go you have to go internally and ask your heart and your root do i feel safe enough in this love connection do i feel safe enough to love do i feel loved and protected and secure in this loving connection how do i feel and is it reflective of the truth um, and then there is also a call to ground your love into, into your life in a, in a new way. Um, I'm actually seeing like a couple like popping popcorn at home and sitting down, um, in bed or on the couch and just kind of snuggling up to each other and watching like a comedy, like a rom-com or something. Um, something like that may, may help you to come together in a way where there's not a lot of pressure to talk, but there's pressure or, but it, yeah, not a lot of pressure to talk. It's not really like there's a lot of pressure. It's more like there's this easy flow that alleviates a lot of the pressure that you guys have been under. And I do feel like you guys have been under a pressure cooker of change. And when you're in a loving relationship and you're under a pressure cooker <laughs> to change, it's really hard because most of the readings you'll, be drawn to or and let me know if this part resonates but most of the readings you'll be drawn to when you're in a pressure cooker of change is literally like readings telling you to walk away and you have to make that decision for yourself like what is right is it time for me to walk away or is it time for me to do something different and so if you know that this is a relationship that is capable and ready to move forward and to heal you can ground your heart in, in a safe manner by going within, by opening yourself up to doing that. That's the number one way to help this breakage occur in a way that actually opens your heart space up and helps your other person see that you can do this. And that's really what their higher self is saying is needed. You need to open yourself up 
more. And I know it's really hard to be like, but I'm already more open. I'm already the more open person in the relationship. That's fine. Yeah, 100%. I I 100% validate if that's how you're feeling because I did get a huge wave of that energy. But does that mean that you have to make a standard of openness in order for you to continue opening yourself? You may be the more open one. However, that person, your person may have started off more open than you ever were. So yes, at this point, you may be more open with things, but they started here, whereas you started here and you're now here or here. And it's time for you to become the person who's here and they are here so that they know that you meet them halfway, that you have learned from the cycles and the lessons that they have taught you as well. And that's something that my husband and I do all the time. He teaches me in big ways, but I also teach him. And we do this back and forth of one of us is ahead of the other and the other one helps pull that one forward. We help each other. And that gives a firm rooted grounding point for our relationship. Sometimes what a relationship needs, especially in the spiritual world, is to come together in a more grounded way. All right. Let's clear that out. For those of you, okay, for those of you who know it's time to walk away, we have the third eye chakra. You have seen it already, I just heard. You have already seen this. You, you've seen what you need to do. You already know. <laughs> You've seen it, but you're refusing to see. Okay, it's it's this has been shown to you time and time and time again, but it's something that you don't want to see. And we get, I'm in no way, shape or form making a judgment here. The cards are literally saying, it's been shown to you. You're, you've had the vision of what to do next. But if you choose not to see this vision, if you choose not to acknowledge that it's been seen, that's your choice. This world is built off of our choices, sacral chakra. So this is about you not being necessarily emotionally ready. For both, for both piles, this is saying, it's time for you to take a step back, to rest, to reconsider. You need to reconsider what is right for you. What is right for the relationship? Whether you are just being called to ground your heart more honestly or whether you are refusing to see the emotional impact and the true nature of the emotionality here between the difference between passion and love. Because when we are in a passionate relationship, we can get filled with all the hormones and, and everything where we think it's love but we won't allow ourselves to really see the truth. Your emotions and your third eye want to align. They want to align and come together in harmony, but you have to allow yourself to see it, to receive the truth. And this is why rest and withdrawal might help on both counts. There are times in our lives when we are going through relationships where we need to take a break in some way, shape, or form. My my oldest daughter, she's 19, 19 and a half. Ugh. It boggles my mind that I have an almost 20-year-old. Um, she just recently went through a breakup with her boyfriend, but it started with her taking a break. And she needed to take a break to realize this isn't right for me. This person should not be treating me this way. I deserve better than that. And then ground herself in that security. She had to see the truth of the emotions in order to ground her heart here. In, in her case, she needed to walk away. Now, when my husband and I, David and I, were faced with the same issue, I had to ask myself, what is the truth of my emotions? Are my emotions reflecting a passionate interaction or are they reflecting love? Is this a true situation for the present 
the present energy, the present relationship, or am I pulling from my past and building a foundation of lies and, and passionate pain from the past? Whatever the situation is, you'll know it because it's your life and your relationship. But the message, the number one message from your person's higher self is you know what is right for you. You can feel this breakdown, this breakage happening, the breaking. You chose the card for a reason. Whether the question you're asking is, will we come back together? Or will we break away permanently? You already know the answer. Because the truth is, is that there may be two energies here it, these could be two possible pathways for you to take. Both true, neither false, both possibilities, but it's up to you to consider, to reconsider, to rest, to rejuvenate your own energy, to remember love, remember how love truly feels, unconditional love, and move from that state because that's what you deserve. That's what you're worthy of. Pile one, more than anything, the entire focus of this reading is unconditionally loving yourself and prioritizing you being loved and loving yourself. And I'm not at all surprised because that's literally my style of reading all the time. But these are important lessons for you to learn right now on your journey. These are important steps on your journey. And especially your journey in love. Because I can see here that there has not been an easy journey for you in this, in this connection particularly. It may have been reminiscent and really resonant with old ways of being and old connections and old relationships. Why now? Why this one? Why? Because you're ready to heal. You're finally ready to heal, to let yourself be broken open, wide open. Let that heart space open and soar and start feeling true to you and to your love. Pile one, this is what I have for you. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you to your guides, my guides, and the guides for your person's higher self. And thank you to the higher selves of your person and spirit for these beautiful, loving, honest, and clear messages. It's a true blessing to sit here and channel messages for you all. And I know that I don't normally do relationship readings, but I do feel blessed and honored to bring this relationship reading to you. So thank you so much. Thank you, spirit. Pile one, if this resonated, first of all, give yourself a big hug. Okay, that's for me. <laughs> no, I mean it. Really, wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself a big squeeze. And I'm doing the same. And I'm sending you guys all that love. That's a big hug for me. Because your situation is not an easy one, and I understand that. Because I have been in very similar. And I am sending you a lot of love. Secondly, if this resonated and you guys don't mind giving, giving a little bit back to me, I would truly appreciate an equal energy exchange. Some of the ways that you can do that is watching my ads in the beginning, middle, and end of my videos and or you don't have to watch all of them if you don't want to. Um, commenting in the comment section below, hitting that notification bell and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, as well as, you know, liking this video all any and all interaction with the videos really does help it within the algorithm and guys i tell you what the youtube algorithm right now is all funky and wonky for tarot readers so this is your friendly neighborhood tarot reader asking you to support all your friendly neighborhood tarot readers that really do resonate with you because we all are doing the best that we can to reach the people we're meant to and we could use your help so 
All that being said, thank you again for being here and I love you guys. And for those of you that voted for this, thank you. <laughs> you guys really did help because it was just too much for me to try and pick one or the other. So thank you so much. I love you guys. I love, love, love you. You guys can check the description box. If you guys are interested in any Zodiac readings, you can check my second channel, Rise and Sign Messages. Link is in the description box. Links to donate to my channel are also in the description box. I am not currently doing personal readings. Um, I will let you guys know if and when that reopens, but I am not currently doing them. So all that being said, I love you guys so much and I will see you at my next reading. Bye. Hello, pile two. If you chose the beauty card, which is the card number 58, as well as this, um, kind of worry stone heart shaped sort of light. <laughs> this is your message all about what the higher self of the person on your mind has to say to you. All right, so we're going to start with the beauty card and I'm just going to read it aloud to you. Um, but before I do that, I actually wanted to uh, tell you that a lot of the energy here has to do with speaking your truth. And it doesn't feel like a negative thing. Um, there's, it's again, this came through similarly in pile one, not the message or the energy, it's completely different, but just having a kind of two different um, groups within the same pile. Whereas some of you, um, when it comes to speaking your truth, it's speaking your truth about the needs that you have within the guise of the relationship. And for others of you, it's kind of speaking your truth to yourself about what you need for you and trusting that your relationship is strong enough to be able to handle what it is that you need for you without it faltering or falling apart. So that's the opening message. Now let's read from the journey of love um, all about this beauty card. <clears throat> So it says, to celebrate the divine feminine is to honor her beauty, her endless bounty and abundant creativity. You are a vehicle of her beauty. This is radiance that has nothing to do with soul-destroying cultural stereotypes based on physical appearances. It is the radiance that comes from feeling beautiful within, of allowing all that you are to shine through you and be witnessed in the world. You are being asked to let the inner beauty become one with your physical self. You don't have to change the way you look to become more of the divine beauty that you are. You just need to change the way you look at yourself. Behold the divine within you. You are in the process of healing past wounds about your appearance, your body, and your sexuality, finding purity in all of you, and becoming ready to share that with others in a deeper and more open way, without shame or self-criticism. Take your time and fall in love with what you are. Then you can become not the victim of others' own projected shame, but the love necessary for the shame of the world to heal. This oracle indicates a significant change in self-perception taking place within you. An ability to love and accept yourself more completely than you ever have before, quite simply because you have grown and there is more divinity awakening or awakened in your heart than ever before. The nature of the divine is love, and you are realizing that you don't have to change to be beautiful. Allow this development to grow swiftly and embrace your uniqueness, beloved, for you are an exquisite flower in the heavenly gardens. And then the poem at the end says, How many times I've looked in your eyes and sailed away beyond my dreams to a sheltered thought on a quiet beach where the sand is soft as flour. You may never know this place, and someday, when you look in my eyes, I will tell you. Pile two. Um, this might quite possibly be the most romantic, loving energy I have ever sunk myself into. This is the energy of your person's higher self coming forth to tell you all the ways in which you fulfill every dream, wish, fantasy that they have ever had. Your beauty, your attractiveness, it shines from the inside. It defies logic and reasonability. 
If you were to sit down with your person as they were open to their higher self, they could tell you all the ways in which you shine and you glow in the ethereal ethereal realms. They would tell you how you have this beautiful iridescent glow about you that shines from the soul and it can be seen in your eyes. The things, the trappings of this world, the mental trappings of this world, where the world says you have to fit in this standard and this guideline, this perspective, you have to be, have this size waist and you have to have this much muscle or you have to have that, that little amount of body fat or whatever. Your person doesn't see that. That isn't even in the realm of anything that they see. They look at you and you are walking beauty and it doesn't matter whether you identify as male or female, man or a woman or or anything like that. It's simply the energy that you carry with you. It's nothing more or less than sheer beauty. You guys are like a walking Aphrodite in this world or a walking Eros in this world. You're walking love. There is such a beauty to that. And I get this sense that your your person's higher self is coming forth to tell you things that your person has already said. This love, this joy, this nurturance. And yeah, you know what, guys? When we get into relationships and we were in those relationships for a long time, sometimes those, those conversations, they stop happening. You stop hearing about how amazing and how beautiful and how brilliant you are. Sometimes. Does that mean that that, those things just stop? That they just go away? Absolutely not. No. Once, when a person sees you as beautiful, the only way that perspective changes is if you change your perspective on yourself and whether that is true or not. And then you in in turn become the ugly that you believe that you are but the truth is is that you're nothing more or less than divine beauty walking in the world and the person who loves you the most will only ever always see that you could gain a hundred pounds you could lose a hundred pounds you could be incredibly fit and incredibly healthy or you could be labeled by the body mass index as overweight It doesn't matter. It doesn't change how amazing you are. It doesn't change who you are inside and out. It's nothing more or less than a perception. To me, the the size and shape of a body is no different in, in in our judgments and our perceptions and our stereotyping. It's no different than the ways that we make judgments and stereotype based off of skin color, nationality, or sexual preference. These are surface level things that don't matter to the soul. They don't matter to the heart and to real love. And your person's higher self really wants you to understand that they really do love you and see you for the beauty that you are. So let's get some more of these messages. (laughs) We have time. You're trying too hard, give it time. So you may have been really trying to fit within some sort of standard or, you know, on, on say a fitness journey, anything like that. And when you push too hard and I'm, I'm living, breathing, walking proof of this. When you push too hard on something like a fitness journey, because you want to fit within some sort of standard of beauty, you can hurt your body. You can physically hurt your body. When I was doing weight training and two a day workouts, I quite literally through all of my liver enzymes so far off that they wanted to do CT scans because they thought that I had a tumor on my liver because my, my liver enzymes became elevated because I had muscle tissue and tissue damage. You don't want to push your body into a state of reactivity. And when you, tr- on, the, on another level, if that's not resonant with some of you, If you are pushing and pushing and pushing to make yourself see yourself through the lens, through the eyes, and through the perception of your person, their higher self is coming forth and saying, don't keep 
pushing to see things from this person's point of view because when you guys are meant to come together and see eye to eye, when you're meant to have that same view as your person, it will happen naturally. So I used to, I used to be so hard on myself. I used to degrade myself so much mentally, verbally, emotionally, but more so about my physical body. Why? Because I had people in my past that that judged me really, really harshly for gaining weight. I, I'm, I'm a mom. I've had multiple children. Because of that, my body changed. You know, as, as a woman, your body changes throughout time. Even men, bodies change, metabolisms change. These things change over time. So I used to call myself fat and, and unattractive. And it just, it was really like I had such severe body dysmorphia that I was 105 pounds in high school and I would still constantly call myself fat. I, now I weigh like 170 pounds and that's hard for me to openly admit because I don't wanna weigh 170 pounds. I wanna weigh 115 pounds. Even though I know 115 pounds at for me would be incredibly unhealthy. But my mind tells me I have to weigh such small amounts. When you're trying to see yourself and see your beauty in the way that the person that you're with does, you can't force yourself into it and you can't push your body and, and push your mind to believe something that you're not ready to. That comes naturally. And the harder you push at it, the, the harder that you push at changing your perspective and your perception of yourself to being more positive, it's almost like beating up on yourself in a way that you condition yourself to believe that in order to believe positively and to see yourself in a positive light, you have to actually be really hard on yourself. And so you're not shifting the perspective, you're doing it in a way that's really toxic. And your person's higher self really wants you to see that you're perfect for how you are, who you are, and you don't have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing on something, on, on some perception or belief system that just doesn't fit the truth of your amazingness. Wow. Wow. Your person, <laughs> your person is amazing. And if you're not in a loving and committed relationship and you're watching this, um, A, why are you here? No offense. No offense. Like this is definitely about people who are connected or B, you're going to be coming into contact with somebody who is going to radically change your life and your perspective on love and yourself in a very beautiful way. Just don't push it. Don't push it. Don't try too hard. Just give it time. All right, we have, yeah, be authentic. See, oh my God, be real and true to who you are and how you feel. Don't push yourself to be a different person when you don't need to be a different person. This right here, and this is exactly it. It's you are meant to be yourself. Be authentically you. Like, look at this woman in the background. She literally is wearing a swan as a hat. Who wears a swan as a hat? But she pulls it off beautifully. I mean, she looks beautiful. Look at her. Look how beautiful she is. But she's wearing a swan as a hat. Who does that? You could do stuff like that. Like, it doesn't matter. Be yourself. Be as quirky and unique and weird and fun and, and free loving as you are. And, and be open to having all these conversations about what is right for you, what you need, what makes you feel beautiful. And, and, and feeling beautiful, it's beyond makeup. It's beyond wearing jewelry. It's beyond dressing up. It's beyond, you know, wearing cologne or wearing perfume or doing this or doing that. When you feel beautiful, you can walk around your house completely naked and just feel like you're glowing from the inside out. You don't look at your body and go, well, I've got fat in this place or, you know, my stomach could be flatter. I could have... I could have more of uh, defined abs. I could have more defined muscle tone or 
<laughs> what have you. Like I could be tan or I could be skinnier, whatever. You don't do that. You just walk around and you just are natural. Your naturalness exudes from you. And that is beautiful. It's sexy. It's alluring. And you, and it really does. It hooks in your person. Like this is their their higher selves, like blatant truth is like everything about you is attractive. It's alluring. It's appealing. It's it's so unbearably sexy that they just want to be with you and around you and experience just being within your auric field all the time. All right, let's see what else we have. <laughs> Practice compa compassion. Seriously, look. See things from a fresh perspective. We all go through changes in our lives. We go through physical changes, emotional changes, mental changes, but our bodies change. There is so much about this that is like, there is a such a deep need for body positivity for you, but it doesn't mean that it's always going to be the most easy journey. No, it's not. It's not. And, it, and give yourself grace because your person's higher self is giving you grace and, and honoring you and giving compassion to what you've experienced before. You may have experienced, if you guys can see the shadow, Willow is like wanting to cling. And that to me tells me that Willow is really feeling very protective and protective of you guys, but protective over the energy as well. It's it's understanding that, yeah, you may have had situations in the past with past lovers, past friends, uh, even even members of your family who were hard on you, harsh on you. You know, when you grow up and you go through high school, it's never easy because you have to have a specific set of clothes, makeup, you know, outfits and and clothing brands and this and that in order to be seen as cool and popular and whatever. And frankly, I don't think that that should be the case because we teach our kids this inaccurate perception of the way that the world works. Like you have to be this and this and this in order to be pretty and popular. That's not the case. And your person is coming through to say, I don't care what any standards say, any beauty standards. Because you you surpass all the standards. Who you are, how you are, that beauty, that you can't duplicate it. If if it was possible to bottle the beauty that you exude within your energy field, it just pours from you, from your your eyes, from your hair, from your skin, from your pores. It's like your pheromones, even. If it were possible to body what you are to or to bottle what you embody you guys would be rich <laughs> i love the way that your person views you because their higher self is like you don't you don't see yourself as clearly as they do but they see you in such a beautiful loving light that they just want me to sit here and and build you up and it's not building you up to tear you down it's building you up because this is the truth. You literally chose the stone of personal truth. This is the truth. You are beautiful. You embody beauty. So let's get these messages from forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. I love this. Trust. <laughs> yes. This situation is calling for you to have faith. Engagement. Ooh. Ooh, your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Ooh, that's exciting. That is super exciting. And chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. What? What? Okay, if you guys can't tell, I don't read these cards ahead of time. I never know what they're going to say. And literally, like... This is one of those moments where I'm preening like a peacock and Willow's getting all excited because I'm like, I'm so psychic. Um, I'm going to let her out real quick. All right, my loves. I am back. Now Willow is outside. But for those of you who are in a loving, committed relationship, but you're not engaged or married, the engagement card, guys, I, I can't lie. I am literally seeing like 
ring boxes being opened and flowers. Um, I'm seeing somebody on a beach. I'm seeing someone on a like on like a boardwalk or a sidewalk where there's a bunch of people like rollerblading and riding bikes. And then all of a sudden it's like everyone is your friends and family and you didn't even realize. That's really cool. Let me know if you get engaged that way. I would love to know. But with or without a ring, with or without a traditional engagement, this is talking about a higher level of commitment. Now, if you're trying to fit yourself within some sort of mold, because you think that that's what's going to make you worthy of an engagement, worthy of fidelity, worthy of being in a loving and committed relationship, and you're here at this reading, you're already in it. You don't have to change who you are. Look, there's a strong magnetic attraction here. I've been saying that the entire reading. So it, this is asking you to really trust in this chemistry that you guys have, this connection, this passion and love. Because in this, there is a lot of love. It's, it's this beautiful energy of giving yourself the freedom to be yourself because your person and they're a higher self right now is saying, be yourself because that's all you need to do is be yourself. Okay, we have giving and receiving and strengthening bonds. And these are in the material world, but this is the psychic tarot of the heart. So we're looking at this like giving and receiving. This is about how do you give and receive love? Because when you realize that the way that you give and receive love should be the same. You should give the same kind of love that you know that you're capable of receiving. And, and this is also talking about giving and receiving and learning from the past, from the past wounds. We talked a lot earlier about past conditioning surrounding how you perceive yourself and how you perceive true beauty within yourself and allowing yourself to forgive others, but also to forgive yourself for allowing those mentalities to become pervasive in your current life. Now, we're all subject to what we learned when we grew up. And when we become adults, we have the freedom to grow and learn and change based off of our own self-awareness and self-perception. This situation now is asking you to really trust, trust in where you are emotionally with this person. Let those bonds be strengthened today with this reading. Let yourself really feel how dedicated and loved you have someone or loving your person is towards you. How truly, truly dedicated they are to you. Yeah, we have detach. So that you can detach from trying to constantly fit yourself within some sort of set of standards that aren't necessary for you to set yourself up for within the guise of this relationship because you're already worthy for who you are. And then we have sadness and isolation. Yes, one, okay. So this is asking you to detach from those old ways of being so that you can learn how to give and receive in a more balanced harmonious way so that you can actually have those really deep, genuine heart to heart conversations about the ways that you have felt sad and isolated in the past by trying to fit yourself within some sort of set of standards for someone else's perceptions and beliefs. When you share this truth with your person, when you share with them how you have been feeling and how that has been hard on you and how it's hard for you to detach yourself from the past because you're afraid of what you're whatever you are afraid of what I'm getting is you're afraid of bringing in more sadness and isolation because if you detach from the outcome of this then aren't you detaching from wanting the engagement from wanting that commitment no you're not you're detaching from the way that it's going to come about you're detaching from the way that it is meant to unfold just like with your body when you detach from this constant push 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 grinding energy you give yourself the opportunity to really grow into who you are in a much healthier way. 
That doesn't mean that you're going to be isolated from the rest of the world. The past doesn't have to repeat itself. It's not meant to. So if you detach from the outcome, you're actually freeing yourself. And even though it looks like the bird itself is flying away from her, what it's doing is it's flying towards freedom. And then she'll have a clear path to follow by following the bird and leaving that desolation, that isolation and that sadness behind. Look, it's literally choosing to leave it behind. When you can open up and be honest about how you've been feeling, that will help. If you feel sad because a relationship is not at a certain level, it's okay for you to open up and communicate that. What else does our pile number two need? Okay, that one definitely wanted to come up. I thought so. Yes, find balance. So there's a lot here within the physical world, the physical body that needs to needs to come back to center, back to self, back to balance and harmony. When you are, when you're working yourself really hard, whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, like you guys could be doing a lot of shadow work as well. And shadow work in a very physical way as is something that I'm picking up. You can throw your body's like pH balance off and become more acidic. Even if you have changed the way that you're eating and you're eating alkaline, you could actually make your body more acidic because it's reacting. You have to learn how to balance everything in a beautiful harmony because with chemistry, we all have a very unique body chemistry too. I don't know, is your person like um, a fitness guru or something? Because that's kind of an energy that I'm getting here. On the back of the deck, we have heal. Look, you see, this is this is something that they have been wanting you to surrender to healing for a long time to let go of and to let it flow into your life this relationship this connection that you have with your person whoever it is that you are here inquiring about this connection that you have is meant to be a healing connection for you and not healing in the way of you're going to go through a lot of toxicity that is going to essentially force you down the the path of healing which FYI guys I've been in that one like my first marriage was that way where it was literally like the most traumatic situation and relationship I could have been in at that time and it taught me so much but it became my my launching point for healing this is not that kind of relationship. This connection that you're here inquiring about, your person's higher self is letting you know, this is here for you to heal through being seen for the true nature of who you are, for being loved for the true nature of who you are, so that you can detach from that past version, that past perspective of who you are, or who you were, or who others tell you you are, so you can step out of that sadness and isolation and come together in harmony, in union within yourself, feeling whole and healed and trusting and be in this relationship in a whole and healed and trusting way. But you have to remember, healing is not a linear journey. There are twists and turns and you and there are cycles to it where you return right back to the same pattern, the same cycles to heal on a deeper level or to recognize how much you have healed or simply to go back over the same healing until it is complete. You don't need to push too hard, try too hard. In fact, you don't need to try at all. It should come natural to you. And I'm not saying that in trying to make you feel bad because if, if you are feeling right now like, oh, this healing stuff, it doesn't come natural to me. It's not about it's it's about how you let it flow out of you. When you are trying and pushing and, and working really hard at that, it can absolutely, absolutely become something that you are, th you're, you're striving towards healing instead of thriving in your everyday life and healing as you go. That's what this detach is really asking you to do. 
It's asking you to let go of the push, 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 so that you can move forward in a more harmonious way, in a healed way, in a healthy way, in a balanced way. This commitment, this love, this, this connection, your person is here to help you with that. Not just, in, not just through their higher selves, but through who they are, the things that they tell you. And if you're not in this connection yet, hold out for this connection. Don't push for it, but hold out for it. Because I am telling you guys, this reminds me a lot of, of when I came, when I met my husband now, David, and how I felt. I was like a spookable deer. <laughs> like one one crunch of a uh, of a twig out on the ground and you would see the white of my tail and I would be gone because I didn't know I didn't know whether love could be healthy and whole I didn't know that I could be valued for all of me no matter what my body looked like at one point in my marriage I in this marriage, I weighed 220 pounds. I felt disgusted by myself and my husband was attracted to me like a teenage boy. When I dropped down to 130 pounds, you know, two years later, you know, that's nearly a hundred pound drop. I, I had a completely different body type at that point. You know what? He was still attracted to me like a teenager. So this is that the, the energy is very similar here. This is here for you to be able to heal your perception of self so that you can be at a more healthy and healed and whole perception of self. I feel really called to rolling the astro dice and actually doing both sets of them. I didn't do this for um, the other piles, just yours. So we have the sixth house, Let's see what else? Um, is this the sixth house? Yeah, this is the sixth house, Neptune and Virgo. I love this. Um, this is energy very, very similar to, um, very similar to the dream meaning reading that I did on Wednesday. And this is talking about, because it's actually the sixth house this time, this is talking about allowing yourself to expand the, the perspective into a more dreamy realm, a more imaginative realm surrounding your personal health and the practical applications of being healthy. With the sixth house, this is the house of health. It's the house, to me, the sixth house is the house of fitness. It's how we care for ourselves. It's also the house of like um, practi practicing practitioners, like medicinal practitioners, um, healing practitioners, uh, the house of the healing witch or the house witch. That a lot of that energy is contained within the sixth house to me. Why? Because the sixth house and Virgo ruling the sixth house. So you do have the ruler of the sixth house. It, it amplifies that Virgo sixth house energy is about how you can put certain things into action on a practical level. So this fine balance, strengthening bonds, giving and receiving, these are all really strong earth energies. And Virgo says, let's get real about what I need to feel whole, to feel healed, to feel healthy, to feel balanced and harmonious. What do I need physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually? Let me bring these all in together. One of the biggest proponents of this is how do I love myself and how can I love myself? When you ask yourself these questions, then you're actually moving forward in a way that you expand the ability to receive in these same ways, in these same areas from other people. So you can actually receive love and nurturing and healing from other people a lot easier and especially from your connection with your person. That's really cool. I love that message. Okay, um, I'm not gonna roll the other die. This is what I have for you guys. And I 
I loved this message. This was so fun. And I really like the energy of your person's higher self. Um, I feel like we would be buddies in the ethereal plane. So yeah. All right. <laughs> File two. I want to say thank you so much to your guides, my guides, spirit, and to the higher self of your person for pile two for facilitating the connection between our energies, for allowing these messages to flow through, for bringing forth these messages. And look, even the candle just went out, which is actually quite an auspicious sign that both the message is over, but also that there's been like a cleansing and a clearing through the message. And I think that's pretty cool. All right, I wanna say thank you so much so that pile twos are able to see themselves more clearly for the beauty and the wonder and the awe of who they are and I'm honored. I am so, so honored to have brought these messages forth. So thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you. Pile two. If this video resonated, I would really appreciate an equal energy exchange. Um, some of the ways in which you can do an equal ener energy exchange is by watching my advertisements before, during, and after my videos as well as liking the video, subscribing to my channel, commenting in the comment section below. Any and all interaction with my channel really does help the algorithm go, hey, this channel is liked. Let's keep it going in the algorithm. And I truly appreciate every time you guys give back to me in those ways. There are also links in the description box. If you're interested in Zodiac readings, I do readings based off of your rising signs. And we're about to shake things up on the Rising Sign Messages channel so that we do focused on the new and the full moons, but then we intersperse with like channeled messages about just about anything and everything. We are really opening those energies wide up so that they resonate with a much wider audience as well and throughout more of your life, but still help you live closer to the lunar cycles. So I'm really excited for all the changes between this channel and that one right now because I feel like I just like opened up like a whole vast array of creativity for both of them and it's so cool. So yeah, I'm excited. All right, Pile 2, I could sit here and keep talking and, and languish in this energy, but I think that you guys probably want to go about your day. So thank you again so much and I love you guys and I will see you at my, my next reading. Bye. Hello, pile three. If you chose the pink opal tower and the card 49 with woman of light, this is your message from the higher self of your person or the person on your mind who you're inquiring about. Um, I will say, I feel like I need to let you guys know in this pile in particular, which is the, interesting because it's the first pile I've had to do this. Um, these have been very, very heavily romantic, <laughs> romantically inclined. Um, so if you're not looking for a message from a romantic partner or former romantic partner, this may not be the reading for you. However, you can absolutely listen and see if it applies to your situation. I just wanted to put that out there because I, I did intend for this to be more of a love and romance reading. So I'm going to go ahead and read the book from the journey of love about the woman of light. Pure is my joy, my celebration. I know the divine to be eternal. There is no limit to my peace, to my pleasure. As I rise and rise and rise again, capable am I of receiving the light, of accepting the next level of illumination. I am sacred flesh coming to light. I am the walking temple, the living goddess, she who shines with truth. I come to you now. I am one with you now. I am awakened. I am the awakened one and the awakener. This oracle brings you guidance that you are to be witness to the presence of an awakened being, either within your own self as part of your spiritual destiny or in the form of a beloved other. An awakened one is in your midst, or soon will be. Receive the blessing that emanates from such a being, for to behold one is a gracious spiritual gift that will lift you 
to the next step of your path if you are having trouble discerning the true presence of an awakened teacher in your midst or even in your own being. Remember that nothing is asked from you by such awakened ones, but loving devotion so that they may serve the awakening of all living beings. It requires much karmic grace to be granted immediate access to an awakened being, even more to become such a living light. Take delight. And the poem at the end says, I asked God for a deepening of my love without realizing that the deeper I was willing to go, the more it involved letting go of any part of myself that wanted to love and still be safe in surrender to the possible lay the greatest potential for love. At levels before unknown, like a cistern that holds the nectar of life and gives its precious liquid only to be filled again with nature's flow, such knowingness is a gift. For if you can embrace the blessing, you can live without question, relaxing and replenishing with each breath, with each kiss, always whole. This energy, this pile, this is something that is so transcendent. It elevates, it rises, it lifts, it shifts, it moves beyond reasonability you're into the mystic realm the realm of the awakened and the one who knows all and then knows nothing and resides within the nothingness this energy here is it it's enlightened energy the higher self of your person is coming forth because there is a reflectionary principle occurring between you and this person this person is showing you bits and pieces of yourself, parts of yourself, ways in which you are able to step more fully into your divine feminine being, open to receptivity, open to love, open to awareness, open and awake and alive. And it is transcending time, space, energy. It's becoming something more, something less than anything that we have words to describe. A message here is nothing more or less than there is a a massive level of mirroring reflectionary nature to this energy to what you're dealing with when you are in doubt look at the person that you love look at the person with the eyes of someone that doesn't belong to the mindset that you have been in but to somebody who can see beyond beyond the physical, beyond the tangible, and into the realms of wonder and mystery and awe. You guys may be Piscean and Scorpionic energies. Um, those are coming through very strongly, even Cancerian, a lot of water energy. At the same time, there's a lot of Libra energy and Virgo energy interspersed in here. This is a lot of energy surrounding the nature and the healing and the wholeness within one's own being being reflected within another person. This is an energy I have not worked with for a very long time and usually only in the privacy of my own like automatic channeling and automatic writing. When you're tapping into energies and frequencies of this caliber and this magnitude and of this, this frequency, this vibrational elevated level, this is an energy that comes directly through moments like standing underneath a full moon as an eclipse. Oh, excuse me, guys. As a lunar eclipse hits and you can just see, you can see as the eclipse passes by, you can see as it's, it's like ineffable there, there it's, it's something you shouldn't be able to see, but suddenly it's there. It's there. You know, they say once in a blue moon, it's so rare, but in all reality, a blue moon is not that rare. If you think about it in that terms, this is the, that energy that we describe as once in a blue moon. But for you, with your person, they want you to know that this isn't a rarity. This isn't a rarity. And... And the way that you 
put this person up on a pedestal, elevate them above yourself, it's inaccurate. Why? Because this person is your equal. They are your same. If you put them on a pedestal, you have to put yourself directly next to them on a pedestal. Why? Because you two are reflecting to each other the magnitude, the power, and the beauty that resides within each one of you. Your, the, your person's higher self is letting you know that everything that you feel, they feel. Everything that they feel, you feel. This is such a beautiful dynamic, but there is this beautiful flow of give and take that is being shown to me in, a, in an infinity symbol that's like a ribbon that's just weaving back and forth. And it transcends. And that's the word that just keeps coming through. This is so transcendent of love. This is a love that doesn't have a definition. We call it love because we don't know the word for it. There's a spiritual energy that exists and we call it love, but it is more than that. It is more. It encompasses more. It's more than just unconditional. It doesn't see anything beyond the object of love. And that is what your higher, your person's higher self is coming through to say that they see nothing more or less than beauty, truth, and love and light within you. And it's the way that you look at them when your eyes light up and that smile and that shine and that glow in the physical form, when that comes over you, when it washes over you, what you don't see is that they are doing the same thing. And you don't see it because you're so focused on how you're feeling and what you're perceiving that you're not able to separate, to detach from the moment. And that's okay. This is one of those times where you detaching isn't, a, you not detaching is not a negative thing. It's, it's not you practicing non-attachment or, or being too attached to something in an unhealthy way. You're actually experiencing the fullness of true love for the first time in your life and it doesn't feel real. It, like the, the energy that I'm in just doesn't feel real. It feels like walking into a dream. It feels like walking into the middle of every rom-com or every romantic movie where the protagonist and the love interest come together for the first time and, and it transcends reality in that moment and Hollywood captures it so well but the thing is is you have the essence of this the purity of this it 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 exists in you and for those of you who are here and you're looking for answers from the higher self of the person that you're going to be with because this is very very specific of a message the person that you're going to be with will feel like a Hollywood movie when you come into contact with them and you're, you're going to scoff at me here and go ahead, that's okay. Because I know I sound like every other love reading tarot reader. But here's the thing, I can't make up the energy. I can't imitate it, I can't fake it. I can't fake this energy. I can only feel how it feels. I haven't even turned over cards, I'm just going based off of what it feels. Also, Willow is responding and so I'm gonna let her out. Okay, my loves, I don't mean to challenge you. I promise I don't mean to challenge you. I literally could hear the scoffing in my head of like, this is bullshit. Hollywood doesn't exist. And I get that. Okay, I'm not saying that it's going to be like a Hollywood movie where it ends when they're just magically in love and everything has suddenly worked its way out. No, the reality is, is that you're going to have to go into the real world in a real relationship and work through real issues. That doesn't mean that you aren't going to have that initial moment of feeling that is magical beyond explanation. That's what the Woman of Light card is saying. It's saying it's not just about an awakened individual. It's about an awakening within yourself, an awakening within your your sacred sexuality is coming alive in this interaction. It is something that is going to, it's like going through a spiritual awakening within the guise of a relationship, but it's more than that. It's an ascension and an awakening. It's like coming home 
while also being launched into the stars all simultaneously. And it's like the higher self of your person wants you to know that this isn't fabricated this time. This is real. You're not applying something that you have watched on TV or heard of in experiential forms from someone else into your life. And it's not an illusion and it's not a fabrication. This is real. This is what, this is what coming into contact with a soulmate, a twin flame, your true destined person feels like. It's like you've known each other for your entire lives. You can't get this person out of your mind and you don't even really know them. It's their face is familiar. Their energy feels like home. And in that, there is so much fear, doubt, insecurity just tumbling forth out of you. Why? Because now is the time to expel all of those things. So in order to expel them, they have to come to the surface. And when they do, they purify. They purify into this beautiful light, just like you're being purified. Your energy is being purified. Your heart, your mind, your soul is being purified so that you and this person that you're thinking of can come together fully in harmony they, so that things can be healed, so that bridges can be built. It may not mean that it's going to be in the most easy, simple form, but there will be a part of you that awakens within during this in, initial interaction with this person, whether this has already happened and you're just here getting confirmation or whether you're about to walk out your door and be like, that's, this is bullshit. I'm not getting into a relationship. I just ended a relationship. I wanted to know what that person, what have you, that's fine. But those are the moments when the universe goes, it's time for love. Let me show you what your worthiness is. Let me show you how you can be loved. Is it always going to be easy? Absolutely not. <laughs> We are human beings living a, a human existence. We are spiritual beings living a human existence. We are fallible in this body. In this form, we are fallible. Does that mean that the love is not real? Absolutely not. Why do I feel like I need to convince you that this is reality? Naysayer may, may you, <laughs> naysayer may you be, Love is coming and it's here for you. I expected a rhyme from that too. So let's take a look at these cards here, the lover's oracle. <laughs> Don't make decisions based on guilt or what you think you should do for it. It is only in being true to yourself that you can be true to others. So if you're feeling guilty based off of, well, maybe I should do this and maybe I should do that. Maybe I should try again with this person because of that. If you're not in a committed relationship right now, this is about someone to come. If you are in a committed relationship, what are the decisions that you're making? Remember what I said, when you come into contact with this person, all the things, fear, shame, blame, guilt, all of those things, they come to the surface. Especially fear, especially guilt, especially shame. They're going to come to the surface. Why? Because it's time to purge them. So what are you meant to do? Are you meant to hide that away? Are you meant to deny love? Are you meant to deny how you're feeling? No. This world is based off of our experiences. We're meant to experience. We're meant to grow together and, and on our own. We are meant to experience love, loss, pain, sorrow, happiness, joy, abundance, pleasure. We are meant to experience these things. We are meant to experience them and we're meant to romanticize them. Now I'm feeling that Taurian energy. We're meant to romanticize it. And so when you come into contact with this person, yeah, sure. It may feel like you have to be untrue to yourself. You may feel like you have to fabricate some part of who you are or try and fit yourself within some standard of existence. But if you're a romantic, be a romantic and don't feel guilty on that. Be the full squishy, ooey, gooey, <laughs> loving person that you are. It's a beautiful thing. Wow. Okay. 
And then we... <laughs> what did I say? New beginning. A new adventure awaits. Embrace it and live your dreams passionately. Do you see? For some of you, for some of you, this is about a relationship that you're already in. And that person is awakening, coming into an awareness and dawning realization in a brand new way. I don't know how it'll work. I don't know when it'll work. Does any of that really matter? No, it's about letting go, letting go of all that that came before. From this point forward, what are you going to choose? Do you want to keep making choices based off of guilt and what, what you think other people want you to do? Or should you move into an awakened and an aware state and be the example, lead by example in your committed relationships? Your, the higher self of your other person or the person on your mind, they want you to make the choice that's right for you. Even if it means walking away from someone into a new beginning. For some of you, it's literally letting go of an old relationship that wasn't meant to be in your life so that this new one can start. Trust it, have patience, be bold, be brave, but be loving. I feel like I'm on a soapbox. <laughs> I feel like I am like taking you to church kind of energy right now. We have the card 15 with practice compassion. See things from a fresh perspective. Exactly. See, it may be that you don't want to see it in this way because it's not realistic, but it doesn't need to be realistic. We're talking about love. Love is not realism. Love is transcendent. We have 50. Consider your foundation. Look at how committed you are to love. And this right here is asking you to really, really genuinely think. Think about what love means to you. Think about how you grew up framing your reference of what love is based off of all the relationships around you. For me, love was sacrifice. Love was pain. Love was anguish. Love was addiction. Love was in and out and running and then chasing. And that is how I learned what love was. And it was unhealthy. It was unbearably unhealthy. My husband and I had to reframe what love was by looking at how we were raised to believe it was meant to appear and then changing that. We had to choose that path. We had to choose that difference, that, that deviation from the way that we were raised. We had to make the firm foundational choice to rebuild the firm foundation. What is your foundational belief in love? And are you ready for that to be shaken up? There's a new beginning in this realm for you. And the higher self of your person, and for, for a lot of you, this is a person that isn't in your life yet. For a lot of you, this is the person that isn't in your life yet. This is a person that wants to be in your life, that is coming to you to be in your life. And I don't normally say these things, and I wouldn't normally say these things if I didn't feel it. I don't like making these predictions because they're unhealthy for love readings. They really are. But this energy, I can't deny. And I don't like doing this, but I'm here to serve spirit. I am here to serve the collective in the way that the collective needs. So if it means that I am here to tell you that you're moving forward into a new beginning, and this, I need to specify for some of you in this pile, for like 45% of you in this pile, this is a brand new beginning with the person that you're actually with. But their higher self is saying, you don't know them yet. You could have been win with this person for a decade and you don't know them yet. Why? Because there is a necessity for them to awaken in a new way. You're the one who is going to be embodying the woman of light energy. And that's non-gender specific. This is about divine feminine energy. You're going to be embodying this and coming forward in this connection in that way in order to shake the foundations of what has been built before so that you can usher in a new perspective, more compassion, more love, more empathy, more nurturing within this connection, more patience. I'm literally hearing like 
is it Corinthians or is that first, is it first Corinthians? Um, or is it Ecclesiastes? Love is patient, love is kind. I can't remember what it is. I'm going to Google it. Hey, look at that. It's 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Let me see. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This is is what you are heading towards. A foundation built upon truth, beauty, belief systems. It is a foundational cornerstone being built, not rebuilt, but built from the beginning, from the inception between you and another person. Even if this is a past life connection, there is something brand new with this connection occurring. For the other portion of you, this is literally a brand new being, a brand new person that is coming forward to you and let and announcing themselves here in a very bold way. Because <laughs> I got to tell you, this is literally what Hollywood movies are made of. <laughs> like, this is the romantic fairy tale. If you're a screenwriter, write your story because we all need to watch it. We just, we just do. We all need to believe in the love that you have right now. We do. We all do. So we have 41. Do something for someone. Give your attention to another. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, but the writing is on the wall in that one. I literally, as soon as I read it, I literally heard from the higher self of your person, give your attention to me now. Like, it's shift your attention now outside of the person that you were inquiring about because this is somebody different. I don't know what this is. I don't know if you guys are in the middle of a messy breakup. For some of you, that's probably the case. And you just need some hope. This is your hope. And it may not come in the form that you want it to, but love is patient. Love knows how to wait until you're healed and ready. Let go of any kind of resentment that you're holding on to with the past, whether it's a past person, past situation, anything. Let it go. This new beginning, no matter which camp you're in, no matter whether this is a current relationship or a new relationship ready to come in, no matter what this situation is, give, like, let go of anything, any kind of resentments from the past, any pains from the past, let it go. Let it go and let it flow because there are changes that are coming that are going to, um, I just heard, <laughs> that's really funny, sorry. I literally just like laugh snorted because <laughs> it's like from the 90s, it's like, I'm I'm literally like watching like Ted Mosby in one of the flashback episodes. This is going to rock your world. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. This is so nerdy, but this is like, I'm so excited for you. If you can feel this excitement that I'm in, like that is how the higher self of your person feels about you. Like there is so much excitement. Like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> We started this off in like super high ethereal realms and then we came down to like 90s real talk and I'm here for it. Oh my God! Ah! You, okay, okay. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys, I screamed in my voice or my throat, it's really dry. Um, past life relationship. You have known each other before. I swear, I swear I don't look at these cards, but I looked at them when they were flipped over and I'm like, oh my God, one of these has got to be the past life relationship card. It's just, I could feel it. Ah, that's so exciting. I'm so excited. Okay, sorry. Oh my God. Oh, I just died. I'm dead. I'm done. Oh, oh yes. Pay attention to red flags. The signs are cautioning you. This right here, give your attention to another, pay attention to the red flags, new beginnings. 
This energy over on this side right here is definitely for the people that are ready to leave, to walk away, to move into something new. This, th you guys may have been drawn to another pile. I'm not going to say which one, but I definitely know that there was another pile that was very similar to this. Not quite to this caliber, but very similar. Um, actually quite similar, but this side right here, this is saying, pay attention to the red spots. Pay attention to what doesn't feel right. Pay attention to what, what the reason is for you walking away. Pay attention to all of that because there is a reason for it. There is something new that wants to come in. There is someone new who wants to come in. Someone new who wants to come in so strongly, it's outrageous. On this other side, this is about you guys letting go of the past, moving beyond, building that that foundational cornerstone. Oh my God, I love it. I love, love this. I love this. Okay, so we're gonna go on this side for those that are in a committed connection and this connection is going to a whole new level. This, this one singular reading has been all over the place. Um, what do they need to know? We have solar plexus chakra. Okay, yeah, based off guilt, Guilt means that you're not standing in your own power. So the higher self of your person is saying, it's time for you to realize that you have that power. Seek it within yourself. Find it within yourself. Embrace it within yourself. It's time to let yourself open up. <laughs> there are some of you who are definitely from that other pile. <laughs> I just have to throw this out there. Uh, some of you are definitely from that other pile. If you were unhappy with that reading, I apologize guys, but it's saying the same thing. It is saying li like damn near literally the same thing. Only this time it's, you're giving your power away to me in this case. Um, for those of you who are from that other pile, you're giving your power away to me to make a different decision for you. This is about you resting and re reconsidering. This is about you making the choice for yourself. What do you want to do? If you love the person, if you can see it going somewhere, if you can see that it, it can be healed, then stand in your power. Don't, don't make a decision. Don't make a decision to stay because you feel guilty that you should be with this person. And don't make a decision to leave because you feel guilty because someone somewhere is telling you that that person isn't right for you. This is about you knowing you, you knowing your heart, you knowing what is right for you, and then coming together with the person who is right for you. What is your truth? What is your heart telling you? That's important for this side. All right, so for the side that is ready to let go and, and move on, we have Blossom, which is the judgment card. So both sides, between Blossom and Solar Plexus, both sides, this is about you owning your own power in this situation. It's about knowing that you are, strong. yeah, move. Look at this, move. Well-deserved reward. Okay, it's time for you to move forward. To move forward and to seek love in the ways that you're meant to be loved, in the ways that you're worthy of being loved. How do you believe that you're capable of being loved? Look, on the back we have observe, again, this is about you taking a step back and seeing all aspects of the situation. How did you feel when I was talking about the romantic love story? How, how does that make you feel? Why do you think that you're not capable of feeling that? Do you feel like you're tied to another person? If you do, cut the ties. This is about you choosing to move from the heart with the heart for the heart. And look, remember when I said you can't put that person on a pedestal because you'd have to put yourself directly next to them on the pedestal? Was that this pile? I think it was this pile, but yeah, because of the reflectionary principle. So both sides are still reflecting each other. You're reflecting the two possibilities. Yeah, there's a lot of fear here, but what do you want to do? If you came to me to tell you what to do, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. This is about your heart, your love, your romance, your connection. What's right for you? I will always pander to what you want because this is your relationship. 
So in that, in this way, pile three, <laughs> look at the reflection of yourself in, in the other person. Observe how that works. And then think about how you want to feel. Do you want to feel a specific way? Is that how your life is playing out? Ask for advice. It's safe to ask for advice. Ask your friends. Ask, ask the people that you love the most, that you trust the most. But remember that you have the power to make this decision. Wow, this, this reading went all over the place, up and down and everywhere. I did not expect it to be all over like that. Man, I got to tell you, I love your guys' energy and I love the energy of your person's higher self. I do 100% recognize that some of you feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I can't deny that I feel that energy really strongly, but I can tell you that your heart already knows what you need to do. Your heart already knows which pile you fall in, which area you fall in, and whether or not the red flags are from the foundation that you grew up in, or if they are truly, like if they're truly red flags, or if they are based off of a fallacy that was created when you were a child, what does it tell you? What are the signs cautioning you against? Are they saying that you're stifling yourself? Are they saying that someone new is coming in there? Are they saying that it's time to walk away? What are they saying? I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You stay or you go, you love or you don't. It's up to you. It's up to you. You're the enlightened one. You're the awakened one. To be a teacher, you have to lead by example. You have to step into that role, but then you have to also surrender to knowing that you will always be the student in every way, shape, and form. And that's important in this case. And your higher self of your person wants you to know that you're learning just like they're learning. Neither one of you knows everything. Neither one of you is perfect, but they don't want you to keep guilting, blaming, shaming yourself, nor them. They want it to be let go so that you can move on in whatever way is right for you. If you want a new beginning with this person, then choose that. If you want a new beginning with a new person, then open yourself up because it's ready. Either way, your heart knows what the right path is here. And they may both be at the right path. You'll, only you will know how this is going to play out. I have no idea. That is not something I'm being shown. All right, pile three, this is what I have for you. Thank you guys so much. This energy has been amazing. Just, I usually don't like doing romance readings, but these romance readings have been, <laughs> and to say the least, they've been definitely waiting for me to do them. Um because I've been called to this for about six months and I think I've done maybe one relationship reading in the past six months, um, if that. So I definitely can feel that. And I'm enjoying it. I am, truly. So I hope you are as well. So pile three, I wanna say thank you so much to your guides, my guides, spirit and the higher self of your person for coming forward, for bringing these messages and channeling them through so that we can all receive the messages of love, guidance, clarity, peace, prosperity, and move forward in abundance of all these things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, pile three. I love you guys so much. I wanna say thank you again for being here. If this resonated, a really great way to do an equal energy exchange would be to watch my videos, and the ads before, during, and after, and or after, if you feel so inclined, um, liking this video, commenting on the video, any kind of interaction, subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and really interacting. You guys let the algorithm know that you like the video, and I always appreciate it. Never necessary, never required, but I do really appreciate it, and I love interacting with you guys in the comment section. I really do. It just makes my day. And David can attest to that. So, all right, guys, I love you all. I will see you at my next reading. Bye. Hello, pile four. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you chose the fourth card, 
the heart fire as well as the rose quartz heart. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys. This is your message from the higher self of the person on your mind. Now, I will tell you guys, these messages have been very romantically focused, very love and romantic focused. That was the intention. Um, <clears throat> when I sat down to make these videos, <clears throat> sorry guys, I coughed earlier and I had like coughed something into my throat, it feels like. But Though that was my intention, I did still want to leave it open just in case it came through as like a friendship or something like that. But that is definitely not the focus. So if you are not looking for a relationship reading, I totally understand you clicking off of this video. <laughs> that being said, welcome. Pile fours, you guys are usually... <clears throat> wow, you guys are usually the ones that are the um the most advanced energies that I deal with so I kind of expect this to take um kind of a, a higher level um however I gotta tell you guys I did not have issues with my throat chakra or anything like that in any other reading which tells me that either you guys were drawn to another pile or you guys may be struggling with speaking some sort of truth right now in your life. And I think we should find out what it is that's going on. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to read the Journey of Love book for this Heartfire card. It says, passion is, ig is igniting within you. It is not a time when things will remain still. Even if the change is only sensed as a subtle stirring underneath the surface of things, even if slow at first, passion will unfold from within your heart, soon to be burning bright like the like a sun, unrestrained. You are learning how to ride waves of passion through eruptions of heat and descent into coolness. Ooh, excuse me, guys, I had to yawn. <clears throat> Bearing the absence of fire only to realize it is returning to you again. Ride its waves, knowing that passionate bliss will always return to a heart that is on fire with love, with love for life. The coolness allows us to experience the heat once you realize that the fire emerging from within you will ebb and flow and will trust in its presence. You will realize that whether your passionate fire is obvious drawing you into life or dwelling quietly within, gaining power from the deepest sources of your being soon to rise once more, it is a constant in your heart. Accept the fire of your heart and know that this is how you are meant to be. On fire with love for all that is. This oracle brings a message for you. Trust the passion and the fire of your heart to guide your decisions now. What would make you feel most alive? Choose that. If you're feeling a lack of genuine passion in your life, take comfort that it is awakening in your own heart now, bringing something that has been long in rest back to life. Guys, I am yawning, <clears throat> which usually happens when I need to transmute and move a lot of heavy energy during readings. So to me, this is saying before I even get into the poem that's at the end of the excerpt, this is saying that it has been a long time since you have felt alive with passion. So let's read the poem and then we'll get into the message. <clears throat> Life unfolds in wondrous ways and time together fills the days with unexpected gifts beyond our wildest dreams, like open hearts as feelings start to face the longing when we part. Our souls know this is more than what it seems. In gratitude, I offer prayer with thanks for this love so rare, asking guidance on this sweet sojourn. The answers come in tears that flow, emotions raw and smiles that show Becoming one is worth 
the wait until I can return. This energy, with that poem setting it off, this is the energy of feeling alive when you once felt dead. It is feeling that fire, that flame, that thrill of finding love again when when love was lost and you and you are looking everywhere anywhere within without to try and find that flame that fire that inspiration that spark that once existed that no longer is there and now this is coming forth and spirit and the higher self of your person is coming forth to say that fire that flame that passion that's awakening once more it's coming back we go through cycles, we go through phases in our relationships, and they're not always easy, they're not always simple. Sometimes we go through the heaviness and we go through the journey of breaking down and breaking up and moving away and moving back together and finding ourselves face to face with the mirror, having to choose whether or not we are going to allow for ourselves to finally, truly, fully be seen. In this moment, in this place, right here, you're being asked by your person's higher self to let it all go. Let the walls go, let the barriers fall, let every kind of resistance that you have had to being seen, being loved, being heard, being adored, being given this chance for truth and honesty and beauty, let it fall. Let it fall to the wayside. Let it crumble down around you. Let the tower of resistance to love fall and let it be ignited like a passionate flame within you and within everything that you do. Because when you open your heart to love, to loving another person as thoroughly and intricately and intimately as you love yourself and you love spirit and you love this life that you're living and you love your passions, when you let another person in, it doubles your life. It adds, it grows, it expands your life. And your person's higher self wants you to become inflamed with love and passion again. To remember what it was like when the butterflies used to hit your stomach and you started to feel alive and realize this person, they don't make me feel nervous. They make me feel alive. They make me feel free, free to be myself, free to express myself in any way, shape, or form because I know that I'm safe within their arms. I know I'm safe within their energy and I know I'm safe to be seen by them. I'm safe to be seen. That's what this card is just screaming to me. And I haven't read the back yet, but this card is just screaming, you are safe to be seen says, look deep within your heart and you will feel my love. My love for you is as deep as the ocean. Sometimes we think about the depths of the ocean and we think of the blackness of the abyss and that can bring so much fear. And sometimes when we think about diving deep into the realm of love, into the waters of love, we think about how dark it can get down at the bottom. But love Love transcends fear. They may be opposites, but they know each other. They are intricately intertwined. That's why there's a fine line between love and hate. And that's why the truth is, is when you hate, you love. And when you fear, you're running from love. And love is the absence of resistance. Love flows like the ocean waves in and out and it's the kind of riptide it's the kind of current you want to be caught in but when you're hurt when you're afraid to be seen when you're afraid to open when you're afraid to fully feel to really see the path and the purpose of love in your life when you're afraid of accepting all of that then it's really really challenging to open yourself back up but fear holds you back in the illusion that you're safe. When you surrender to love and you surrender to diving into that place that you're afraid of, that's when you're truly safe. You're never safer than in the arms of love. Actually, that makes me want to read this one. Soulmate, yes. 
Your soulmate is already with you in spirit. Believe this and they will manifest physically. So if you're not in a connection yet, if you're not in a connection, the higher self of your person is coming through to say, I'm already here. Believe in me. Believe in this. Believe in love. And if they are in your life, all you have to do is open your eyes and look. Look and let yourself see. Let yourself feel that peace and that grace. You may not always understand why certain things happen. However, there's always a higher purpose to the events in your life. Through turmoil, a blessing will soon be revealed. So if you have recently lost love, felt as though love has escaped you, the reason for this is because there is something greater, grander. There is something you are learning, learning to be yourself, learning to fly free as who you are, learning to love, learning to forgive, learning, growing, changing so that you can continue to open your heart, opening your heart to what? To more, to more love, to more truth, to more beauty, to more. Yes. Yes, be in the present and dream of the future. When we dream, everything is possible. It's look how much more is being created on this card. You have the whole of the cosmos, the entirety of the universe, which is contained within each and every one of us. We are walking stardust in this life and we're worthy of love. We're worthy of the greatest, grandest love story ever. And sometimes, sometimes we forget that because we've been through pain, because we've been through sadness, because we've been through hardship, because we forget what it's like to feel alive, to feel that fire of life, of love, of passion, of glory, of truth and honesty and authenticity. We forget what it's like to feel that. And then when we get that little bitty taste of it, that's when we see the blessing. That's when we see when I felt like I was at my lowest, when I felt like I was all alone, it was in those moments that I remember that spirit is always with me, that love is always with me, and that I am deserving of love in all times, at all places. And because of that, I can open myself up once more to the love that I deserve. Yes, speak the language of love. Loving words have the power to change lives, including your own. That's what we're doing here. We're sitting here and we're speaking what love sounds like, looks like, feels like. Because, yes, I feel in this pile that you have had a long journey in love. A long, arduous, and painful journey in love. And of course, of course, that is no small thing. But what is the language of love? The language of love is the kind that makes you feel alive with fiery passion. It's when you come to a reading and you... Feel spirit in every moment, in every essence, in every instance of that reading. And you want to go out and you want to live your life and you want to experience life and you want to go boldly and daringly forward into your own future. That, that's the language of love. The language of love is more than just, I love you, I love you too. The language of love is, I see you, I feel you, I understand you, I acknowledge you, I validate you and your experiences and your knowledge and your wisdom and your powers and your glory and your joy and your sadness. I acknowledge and I validate everything that you feel because everything you feel is everything you are and you are here. And the, your person's higher self is literally telling you all of these things because they may not be able to say it yet. They may not be able to tell you these things. So their higher self is coming through to make you realize what you've already known all along about yourself and what you contain within. And that's passion and glory. The word passion and glory, the words passion and glory just keep coming through. I don't know why, because I've never heard the word glory in a term that felt more alive as it does today. We think about glory and we think about it in terms of victory and lording something over another person. But think about the glory of, of a sunrise, the glory of a sunset, the glorious nature of sun-kissed skin. 
right now, the number one thing coming through from your person's higher self is passion. Passion needs to be awoken once more. Passion is what is missing. And passion, passion is here again. So let's get more messages. Flirt, extend your lighthearted energy to others. Yes, when you are feeling passionate about love and passionate about life, you flirt with each and everything that you come into contact with. Not because you're trying to be deceptive or deceitful, not because you don't value the relationship. In fact, you value your relationship that much more that you still flirt with the person that you're with. That's something that my husband and I do all the time. He still makes me blush because he makes some flirtatious comment all the time. Yes, you can still act like a teenager as an adult. I'm 35 years old and we still act like we're, you know, 15 years old sometimes. Flirting with each other and, you know, making horribly inappropriate jokes with each other. Your, your person's higher self wants you to flirt again, to feel that again. I apologize if you guys can hear the noise. Give me just one moment. All right, guys, I apologize. Let's check this next card. Oh my God, look at this. Soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. How much more resistance can you put forth? How many more walls can you put up? trying to protect your heart from pain. A lot of the time when you try to protect your heart from pain, you can create more pain. Why? Because you resist what is right in front of you. You resist what is right there waiting for you. What is right there loving you. Let's keep going. <laughs> we have new love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. And again, with this soulmate, it says, your soulmate is already with you in spirit. Believe this and they will manifest physically. So you have a, a soulmate, a new love, someone you're flirting with. So whether this is an old connection that's coming back around or whether this is someone who has come into your life for the first time, letting go of the old wounds, the old past is what is needed right now because new love is right here. It's here to ignite that inner flame within your heart, that passion to bring it back to life. <laughs> I love it. Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Believe this and they will manifest physically. My, my darling pile of fours, I would say that 99% of the people watching this have gotten out of a long, term relationship perhaps recently but for a lot of you it hasn't been in the recent and by the recent i mean within the last 6 months it's it's been a long time and the higher self of your person may not be a person that you know physically yet but it is most definitely a soulmate ready to come in and i have not had a reading this strong of new love coming into your life. If you are in a relationship, this may not be your pile. <laughs> Plain and simple, this is likely not your pile if you are in a loving and committed relationship. And I don't want your fears to keep you here. I have been that person where I have come to the wrong reading because my fear has brought me here. Because my fear brought me to those readings, the readings that were like, there's a new person coming in, a soulmate is coming into your life, your new love is coming into your, I've been in that place and that has been my fear. So if you are in a loving, committed relationship, you know 100% that you came here hoping for messages from the person that you were in a relationship with and their higher self. This pile is not for you. There is another pile here that is for you. And I know which one it is, but I will not tell you because you. I, I trust that you know, I trust that you know it and that you will go to it. And I trust that spirit will lead you there when you're ready to shed the fear. For those of you who are here and you are single and 
looking for a message from the person that you're going to be with. You may have come here without an actual person in mind, and that's why you chose this one, thinking maybe it'll just be about myself. Maybe it'll be about my friend. What this is, is a letter. It's essentially a love letter from the universe, but a love letter from the higher self of your person. And whether your person is in your life or not yet, they will be soon. I'm actually seeing like a meet cute at a at a hospital. That's interesting at like a coffee cart in a hospital. I don't know. I'm getting Grey's Anatomy vibes here all of a sudden. Like I'm watching Grey's Anatomy and somebody bumping into somebody else at, at a hospital and meeting and getting coffee and whatnot. Um, I don't know if maybe somebody here is watching from Seattle, perhaps um, that's coming through. Uh, but yeah, Grey's Anatomy is coming through pretty strong, which is very strange. Um, and that's actually been coming through for a couple of days for me. So it's nice. First of all, it's really nice to have a location for why that was coming through because I wasn't really in the mood to watch Grey's Anatomy, especially after having major medical stuff go on in your life. Like you're like, I don't need to watch medical dramas where people die a lot. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> if you're new to my channel. And you don't know, I just recently had a, an ovarian cancer scare and had to have my last ovary removed. So me saying like, I don't want to watch Grey's Anatomy right now, that would be why. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe you're going to meet a doctor or a nurse or a surgeon, someone at a hospital, um, perhaps a CNA, a certified nursing assistant, Something of that sort, um, somebody in cardiology, perhaps. That's ridiculously specific for somebody. <laughs> I just saw someone getting an echocardiogram. Um, I was shown a vision of an echocardiogram. It's kind of like, a, it's almost like an ultrasound over your heart, essentially. Um, but yeah, I was, I was picking that up. So interesting. But what I'm getting is you're essentially going to be meeting someone in, a, in an unusual place. Something that you might not expect, but this person is going to feel like home. They're, it's going to feel like you're a kid again. Yeah, strengthening bonds. It's, it's this essence of two separate people coming together to form a new path together. You, Yeah, <laughs> I love that. We have detach. So this is, I'm going to let them come out here. Blossom. Opportunity beckons. One more. Let me get one more for pile four. One more. It sounds like cheerleading. <laughs> now I'm seeing bring it on. Oh my gosh. There's so much here. Maybe you guys are, oh, we've got shine. I love that. And on the back of the deck, oh my God, you can't make this up. Look at that. You literally have love on the back of the deck. That is literally the lover's card. It's the soulmate card in this deck. Oh. <coughs> okay. <laughs> in order to strengthen the bond within yourself, you need to detach from the past. Detach and move yourself out of what was so that you can blossom into who you truly are and allow for love to blossom within your life. Right now, there is something that is calling to you, that's pulling to you. It's something that's gonna help you to shine out from the inside out. And this is really important. It's going to really change things. Um, give me one moment, guys. Okay, guys, I am hoping that I'm going to be able to edit out all the background noise. Um, Cooper was just getting into the shower and I've told him twice that I'm filming, um, but I don't normally film at night. Anyway, <clears throat> your guys' is actually one of the most succinct messages, which is funny because you had the most cards come out. You had the most cards come out for your reading but they're all saying the same thing. They're saying it, you've, you've really done the work to, to build yourself into the person that you need to be in order to be ready for the soulmate. You have done the work to heal, to move on from the past, 
to open yourself up to be guided into a more peaceful state, a true state, a state in which you are ready to be yourself. You're ready to follow the calling of your heart and your soul, to shine forth from who you truly are, to allow for yourself to follow what your heart path is pulling you to. That heart fire, that passion, that purpose, that meaning, that adventure that's calling to you, that's pulling to you, that's really beckoning forth for you, you're ready for this. And it this is ready for you. And the higher self of your person is coming forward and letting you know they will know you. You will know them. It, and it's gonna, it just feels so magical. It feels so magical. I honestly am not getting anything else from this energy. It's it's simply to just let, let your truest nature shine forth. Surrender the past, detach yourself from it, let it go, move forward in a state where you trust in yourself. And let the passion back in. Let, let yourself feel the real nature of passion, that real nature of connection, of soulmate love. Let yourself feel it because it's ready for you. All right, pile four. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides, my guides, and spirit for facilitating the connection between our energies. And thank you so much to the higher self of your person for coming through and bringing forth these messages. I want to say again, I apologize for all of the background noise. I am really hoping I'm going to be able to edit it out. Um, but sometimes the kids get a little sassy because kids just need attention sometimes. But I am honored to have brought these messages forth for you. And I want to say thank you so much for being here. If this, if this reading resonated, I would really love an equal energy exchange if you wouldn't mind. No big deal if you don't want to. But some of the ways that you can do an equal energy exchange for the reading is by watching the advertisements in my video, whether before, during, or after. Liking the video, interacting with it, commenting in the comment section below, letting other pile fours know and interacting with the other pile fours as well as subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell. Um, totally not required. I really appreciate it because you guys are the ones who do the legwork to keep my videos in the algorithm. And that really means a lot to me. And it does help me with the light working that I do. So uh, to me, I feel like that is a huge collaboration effort with you guys and myself and my channel. So yeah. All right, pile through fours. <laughs> I'm like off my game all of a sudden, um, the momming stuff, but I love you guys so much. I am really, truly so appreciative of you. And if you guys are interested in checking out my other channel for Zodiac readings, Rise and Sign Messages, the link is in the description box, as well as links to donate to my channel if you feel so inclined or email me for if anybody is looking for a collaboration or anything like that, shoot me an email and I will get back to you. All right, my loves. I, I will see you at my next reading. Bye.